Welcome to the Money Talks for Beginners podcast. My name is Frankie Ho, a money nerd. Each week, you'll hear me talk about different ways to use money more effectively in your daily life to become a smarter finance person. Thanks for spending your time with me today. Now, let's talk about money. Welcome to the 16th episode of Money Talks for Beginners. Today, we are going to look at what our active investment approach, what our passive investment approach, the pros and cons for both of them, and which one makes more sense for you. So first of all, I want to tell you that when I'm talking about the active and passive investment approach, I'm not talking about active mutual funds or passive mutual funds like index funds and ETFs. I'm talking about the actual approach um, for people who are investors and traders in terms of how they invest or trade their money. That's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about active and passive investment approach. Because um, just in case you guys are mixed up, active mutual funds and in ETFs and index funds and stuff like that, um, overall, as I mentioned before in my previous episodes regarding uh, that topic, I'm more leading towards obviously um, index funds or e- e- ETFs and stuff. But of course, there are also pros for active mutual funds. But I, if you are an average Joe, I would, uh, I recommend you actually do more of the passive mutual funds like index funds and ETFs because you might not want to spend the time to and the dedication to do to pretty much invest your time into it. But for this actual episode, I'm actually talking about the actual investment approach for individuals. Um, investors and traders and how they approach it so investment approach is as I'm in for this episode is really about um, how people invest their money how they approach it and how they go do it so first of all let us talk about um, what our active investment approach so active investment approach is just like the name sounds like you are actively looking and actively managing your securities in an attempt to outperform the market or a specific index like the S&P 500, NASDAQ, um, TXX um, index, any and, and any other index that are in other major um, stock exchange um, countries. So um, some of these investors will try to attempt to outperform the market by timing the, the market by seeing when is a good time to buy and sell the security on a short and medium term to take advantage of any short-term trends news and any other factors that they can take advantage of to give them a competitive edge in order to buy and sell these securities these people are more of a, on the trader side so they can be um, a scraper they can be day, uh, day traders they can be position traders or even a swing trader so it depends on how you do it yourself um, and how much time and stuff like that um, you can be a different type of traders and to take advantage of the market to take advantage of the market um, in order for you to profit and of course as I met this uh, I talked about the different types of traders before in other previous episodes if you want to you can re- refer back to previous episodes talking about the different types of traders that are out there another type of um, active investors or active investment approach people are the people will buy individual securities um, in order to attempt to outperform the market so a lot of these people would analyze a stock really heavily so they would spend a lot of time looking at companies that they think in the long run will outperform the market by um, a very big margin for example is uh, the latest one would be like tesla or even before that like the fang stocks uh, if you looked at it if you just buy the fang stocks you would outperform the market by a very um, healthy or very nice margin but of course most of these stocks also have a lot more volatility so you also you need to make sure you have the conviction and you have the risk tolerance and of course the heart and the strong enough your own uh, financial situation in order to bear um, having the ups and downs of the market so some of these stuff some of these people obviously if you bought it at a good time you would have profited greatly from buying these individual stocks the ex- imagine if you bought tesla when it's like two hundred dollars and went to two thousand dollars and then they stock split and then so you would have made at least minimum like 10 times 10x times so of course that would 
very positively change your portfolio, your mostly stock portfolio, and maybe even help you change how you view the world. And I was obviously give you, gave you a lot more money to work and to do other stuff that you were thinking of doing. For the future, of course, that would change the world for the better. And knowing that you outperform the market obviously makes you feel very good and makes you feel like a genius too at the same time, which is great. Uh, but of course, there are also the flip side where a lot of investors or, or a lot of people that bought individual securities um, think of like investors that bought like Lehman Brothers, DD, Nortel, and a whole lot of other companies that failed. Um, that they, it also changed the world, unfortunately, but for the worse. So obviously uh, it looks uh, based on what I'm saying already you would have noticed that being an active invest investor takes a lot of work and takes a lot of uh, devotion and you have to dedicate a lot of time to make sure your portfolio is up to date and you are you know what the heck you're doing too um, most active investors have two types of assets allocation there is the, the strategic assets allocation and there's the technical allocation so the strategic assets allocation is more of a long-term um, allo assets allocation um, so some people might be like i want 50 percent into the stock and i want 40 percent into the stock market uh, sorry real estate market and then the rest into other alternative assets class so um, that would might be your overall how you want to allocate your assets and this is actually probably one of the more common one but a lot of people who invest into real estate usually just buy real estate and it's 100 real estate um, assets allocation uh, usually i don't like that approach but if you are making money why why diversify too much if you are making money as long as you're not uh, stretching yourself out too thin um, but that some active investors would be like okay based on what's happening with the current market you that person might not be a person who likes to buy like a specific type of securities or a specific type of assets but because how hot or how trendy that specific assets or class is go is doing they might be more inclined or more willing to allocate more of of their assets and more of their time to dedicate mo most of these resources to this new type of assets in order to you know make money as quickly and as efficiently as possible for an example would be like before 2015 the stock market overall actually performs better than the real estate market but since the canadian government decided to drop the interest rate to a historical low around 2015 then they also increased the number of immigration coming in it caused the real estate market to go up like crazy like i mean crazy to a point where now that you can't even really buy a townhouse or a detached unless somehow you're in the top uh, five percent income earner like 200k plus to to uh, buy a detached which makes absolutely no sense but hey what the heck um that's just how the toronto market is unfortunately is like right now so if you are very fortunate enough that before 2015 um, you bought a detach or bought a couple detach and you took advantage of what's happening with the market you would have technically you would have been you know allocating more of your assets maybe before you as i mentioned before 50 percent to the stock 50 percent uh, 40 percent to the real estate and 10% in the uh, other, you might be like, instead of having the 10% in the other and full 50% in stock, you might be like, I'll just keep 30% and then 70% into real estate. And so that you, but then in long run, you would put back more into the stock market and into other assets allocation. But right now you just want to take advantage of what's happening with the real estate market. So then you start investing more into the real estate market with your money. And then if you have done that before 2015, you would have done really well for yourself. Because in 2015, the a single detach is probably like 400, 500K. And now it's around 1.5, 1.7 mil, million for the same detach that was only five to six years ago. And to be honest, market price is really how, how much the market or people are willing to pay for it since people are willing to pay such a crazy amount for a detach great for them if they have the money but it's just kind of um crazy for me and of course you have to stay up to date with the current trend.